everyone it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this uh, very exciting quiz co uh, competition first time ever on a quiz on a fever and this is being done on a platform of fever foundation i am dr manjula from fever foundation so before we start the program i would like to share with you all the rules and regulations of uh, this quiz uh, before we start uh, the next slide please first uh, e uh, rule is this quiz is for the postgraduate student only the quiz consists of multiple choice question there will be 20 questions in this quiz the options to be selected by clicking on the button on the text panel so you need to text panel though video will be displayed but there it is just for representation purpose only you cannot click on the video you have to use the button next to you text button and all participants are advised not to leave the platform till the end of the program and do not go to the youtube because you cannot play the quiz on the youtube it is only just for viewing only so therefore as a participant please stay on this platform uh, to play your quiz game then once you submit your answers it will not be possible to revert it there is no negative marking in the quiz the winner will be selected with the maximum fast right answer fastest finger right answer will be the winner and if there is a tie a tie breaker one round will be conducted with three questions will be done to decide by the winner and it is advisable to use the laptop and desktop for the better experience and the uh, easy of uh, playing this game and next slide please very few more to advise the participant to participate from a place with good internet connectivity if found to be any type of foul play it will be uh, candidates will be automatically disqualified and should not use mobile phone getting their answers from any of the colleagues and uh, sitting nearby and fever foundation is not responsible for any form of technical error such as poor internet connectivity etc and uh, please note that participation in the quiz implies that participant accept the integrity of these rules the participants who have given incomplete or inaccurate personal and contact details will also be disqualified non compliance with the rules result in automatic cancellation of the participant in the quiz and of the candidate in the camp for the prize and please note the first and second winner from this zone will play as a team now we are playing as an individual after we get the first and second winner from each zone you will be playing as the west zone representative and you will be called to bangalore for the national level quiz competition which is going to be held during fefcon 2022 which will be in november 5th and 6th in bangalore and for all the rules and regulation quiz masters and the judges decision will be final you need to abide by their decision so i wish you all the very best and let's enjoy and play the game now, so before we start i would like to introduce our judges and the quiz master for today uh, first slide please our judge for today is dr jagdish chanapa sir he is known to all of you he is a consultant cluster head of pediatrics at manipal hospital group bangalore he is a past president and respiratory chapter of indian academy of pediatrics he is a ceo of bangalore metro and llp and he is a consultant child central hospital bangalore and involved in teaching undergraduate medical students postgraduate student and nurses He's been the president of IAP BPS from 2007. He's been the examiner for MD Pediatric from 2007 onwards. He is organizing chairperson for several conferences to name a few. Respicon uh, certified in pediatric bioethics from Mercy Children's Hospital Cancers in 2015. Certified by the Karnataka Medical Council and the Mumbai Medical Council. He is in the Hospital Ethics Committee, Manipal Hospital, from 2012, 13, 2019 onwards. He is also in the Immunization Subcommittee of IAP, and he has been the COVID-19 uh, Pediatric Task Force for the Government of uh, Karnataka. So it's our pleasure and have to as your judges and welcome to the quiz, sir. So the, we have our uh, two quiz masters, very eminent pediatricians, with us as a quiz master, Dr. Chetan Trivedi. MD uh, DP uh, from uh, pediatrics uh, from Ahmedabad he's a practicing pediatrician and a very well known neonatologist from Ahmedabad he practices at Neha Children Hospital 
Ahmedabad, and ex honorary assistant professor and infectious disease consultant, UN Mehta Institute of Cardiology and Research Center. He's been an organizing secretary of several conferences, and he's going to be IAP Pedicon organizing secretary for forthcoming uh, Pedicon 2023. He's a president elect of AOP Gujarat 2022, executive member of CIAP 216 to 21. He's a scientific conveyor of Vedne Wisdom. Most of you have seen her, so everywhere. Wednesday, uh, he will have a scientific meet called Wednesday Wisdom, and which is very, very popular. And treasurer IAP ID chapter 20 to 23, joint secretary of IAP ID chapter 18 and 21. He's a member of Academic Council CIAP and past president AOP of Ahmedabad and authored several chapters in many books and national trainer. And he was uh, training part of the training of central IAP activities, uh, SOS Hope, IAP VAC, IAP Arab, APT, RTA, ATM, NTEP, etc. Under five visa module, uh, several of them, 90.98.7 .90 FM fever module also. He is on the advisory board member of Fever Foundation. So uh, Dr. Chetan Trivedi, sir, welcome to you as a quiz master, sir. So we have another eminent uh, quiz master with us today, who is Dr. Agnish Popatsar. He is also a very renowned pediatrician. He's a practicing pediatrician in Rajkot since more than 25 years. He has a fellow of IAP since 2014. He has several positions uh, held in various organizations, professional organizations. He's a chairperson of IAP ID chapter 2021, national vice president 2018, IAP ID chapter, and national executive board member. Uh, of uh, 2009 and 2013, President of IAP Gujarat in 2016, President of IAP Rajkot 2004 and 5, He's the President of IMA Rajkot 2000, and he is editor of many books to name a few, Coffee Table Book on Vaccine, Vaccinology, ID Chapter Publication of 2022. He's been the organizer, very well-known organizational man. He has conferences organized, uh, some namely for very many national, state, and local conferences. He has been Editor-in-Chief of Organizing Rainbow, a President Action Plan for Gujarat, and his faculty of IAP, IMA National State and Local Conferences across India. So Dr. Agnesar, welcome to you, and I welcome you as the quiz master for today. So now uh, with all this, may I now request our quiz master to take over and uh, conduct the uh, proceeding, conduct the phrase. So over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, very good evening, all the friends. Uh, at the outset, on behalf of me and Dr. Yagnesh Bhai, I would like to thank the Fear Foundation for this, giving this wonderful opportunity uh, as a quiz master to attend this quiz, because it is always better to become a quiz master rather than uh, take a participation as a uh, participants. Because here uh, we have only look, we have to look at what is the correct answer and the computer will show us the correct answer. So we are not at a loss at all. But what... Uh, exciting thing will be for the participants and those who are PGs. I am sure this you are going to love this because we are having this zonal uh, quiz competitions. We yesterday finished the east zone, today it's a west zone and then rest of the zones will be every day will be taking and as uh, Dr. Manjula said that you will get an opportunity to participate in the finals if you do best and most importantly this particular session is not about only knowing or your knowledge but how swiftly you answer. And sometimes, you know, uh, our, our gadget should be working properly because our fingers and all, I think I'm sure that you young people are having a faster fingers than <laughs> us. So I'm sure it will be a tough competition amongst all of you. So uh, I think first uh, I would request Dr. Yagnesh Bhai to go for a trial run. And he, he will be having three questions where you just uh, start rolling out and you just practice it once. So these three questions are not going to be counted in your answers or in the in your uh, tally. But after that, we'll start the quiz. Uh, so, Yagnesh Bhai, over to you, sir. Yeah, good evening, uh, one and all. As uh, Dr. Chetan has already narrated, we'll be uh, playing a dummy quiz with three and uh, three questions. Uh, so, Computer Ji, let us start with the first question.
So first question is on your screen right now. India celebrated the country's dash Independence Day in August 2022. Options are 74, 75, 76 or 77. Your time starts now. So I know uh, uh, everybody knows the answer, the computer G, right answer is 76th Independence Day in celebrate, was celebrated in August 2022. So this is the how we will be playing. So you get acquainted with your mobile or the laptop, whichever is you are using. I think, Yagnesh, by here the trick was 76th, right? Because yeah. we know that Azadi ka Amrit that was Azadi ka Amrit Mahasav is completed. So we finished 75. So there is a click. So many of us might have missed 75, that. 75, yeah. So yes. this is the way Let the us, questions are formulated. Let's, let's see what's the... Uh, proportion of the people. The yeah. So, 68% uh, said it is 75. 75th, uh, you said, they said. Uh, 75, they say 68%. So, uh, in a way, they were thinking correctly, but the, they didn't understand the question properly. So, what you have to do is not only read the question carefully and then find the answer. So, even 20% uh, said it 76. So congratulations to all 20% who said it correctly. Now, uh, Computer G, we can have an, another uh, question. India's PM reintroduces the extinct cheetahs on his birthday last week. The cheetahs were brought from which country? Nigeria, Nambia, I think he loves the connection. So yeah, you please go Zambia ahead. or Angola. Your time. Computer G, time starts now. So this is a very recent event which occurred and almost it hit the headline of almost every newspapers across the country. So I, I know almost everybody will be having a correct answer. The correct answer is Nambia. And Computer G also saw us the, how many of the participants said it correctly. So I think English by here, everybody was knowing that Chitas have been brought, but <laughs> Namibia, Zambia is a, and Nigeria, all three are, uh, you know, confusing names. names. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I said so my guess is hundred percent will get it. Oh. Eighty-five percent. Yes. So almost, almost near to hundred percent. Not hundred, if not hundred percent. So this is how we go ahead with the scheme. Yes, computer G. Now we go ahead with the third question. Who is considered the father of surgery? Yatindra Mohan Sengupta, Chanakya, Chitranjan Das, or Susruta? Your time starts now. <coughs> So from the recent events, we had now gone to the past. So uh, computer G, correct answer is Shushruta. How many of them said it I correctly? Is if the people are interested in mythological things, then they must be knowing the answer. Because yeah. Shushruta is considered to be a father of surgery and uh, 
so that's a mythological thing so those who are interested in that and they must be reading then only they will be able to answer so i am sure but the the most common name which has been heard is sushruta so i feel like majority will be going with this correct answer yes and, and you that's are very right more than 92 percent said it correctly so this were the three questions we dummy questions whose answer we did not considered as a part of a quiz but this is to acquaint you with the rules of the quiz and the uh, speed of the quiz we have decided to run this dummy uh, quiz so now we go start the actual quiz and i request my co-partner dr chetan trivedi to start the quiz dr chetan oh thank you agnesh bhai that was a brilliant exercise i think everybody must have uh, checked their fingers whether whether it is working or not and whether they have given the correct answer that has been flashed into the on the screen or not so now we will be going for the real competition so friends be ready don't get distracted check your net connections and here the fastest you answer correct answer you will be getting the chances to move ahead in in the competition so now let us go to the quiz competition by fever foundation fever quiz 2022 and your first question will be there on the screen right now so the question is the following is responsible for elevating the thermoregulatory setup your options are cytokines prostaglandins prostenoids or gaba and your time starts now your times over now competitor let us know the correct answer and this is looks very simple question but still uh, let me check the first correct answer is what is the correct answer for this cytokines yagnesh bhai this looked a bit simple question so what do you think how this particular thermoregulatory setup is working yeah definitely this is a very simple question but we should start with the simple question so that the uh, warm up this is almost a warm up round so uh, friends the cytokines are the major regulatory system which is controlling the temperature of the body so in case of infection it increases in amount and the, that is why the our temperature rises so uh, computer ji yeah no please. sir uh, i would like to add one thing because we know that there is a hypothalamus which is having a thermoregulatory center and we know that fever is an immune mediated response to fight against the offending agent so when there are pyrogens they are liberated that will cause the thermoregulatory setup to go up so there will be a specific point at which the thermoregulatory set point will be there and that will cause a fever so that is one of the mechanism for fever rest can be either if there is a heat production which is exceeding heat loss or if there is a defective heat loss so these are the reasons for fever but in this particular question it is been specifically asked which are the uh, following that that means the cytokines they are pyrogens they are causing this so can we have the how many of them they have given the correct answer so 62% gave that b answer and 32% they got the correct answer in form of cytokines now let us see who is the person who has given the correct answer in a shortest time deepak kumar patel he took 4 seconds fantastic dr deepak fantastic you have been very quick very many congratulations so computer ji this was the first question now let us go to the question number 2 which statement is incorrect about the viral fevers a viral infections cause high grade fever b abnormal interfebrile period c disseminated involvement and d family members may be affected and your time starts now
Time's up. Computer G, can we have the correct answer? It's abnormal interfibrile period. Now, this is very tricky. Here, the question was, which statement is incorrect, right? It was not asked which was correct. And yes, because we know that in viral infections, the interfibrile period will be absolutely normal. Child will be playing. Yagnesh, by your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Viral infection causes very high-grade fever. It has in dissemination, <clears throat> multi-system involvement, or many system including respiratory, uh, GI tract, or even uh, there was sometimes CNS also. And usually, of course, not always, but usually other family members are always uh, affected. So multiple family members in the... Uh, uh, in, if they are affected with the same disease, it usually goes in favor of the viral infections. So, so rather, only, only wrong thing was the interfebrile period here. Correct. So, so rather when we want to pick up the bacterial infection, we look at the child. If he looks sick only, even without peak of fever also, that will give us a clue that it can be a bacterial infection. And we know that viral infections, viral fevers are very high grade fever initially, then gradually they go down in three, four days. Well, bacterial infections, you know, they go for gradually, they'll come up and then will remain there even after three, four, five days. Then, then either the bacterial infection will localize or it can be in the blood. So this is the way viral bacterial, they, be, they have been differentiated. So let's see how many of them given the correct answer. Computer G. Wow, wow. 66% they have given the correct answer B. So majority of them have given the correct answer still. 27% are confused with the disseminated involvement. So we should be knowing that viruses are the things that it can affect any system, anywhere. So when there is a diarrhea also, then there's a fever also, then there's a cough cold also, then it can be viral. Usually the bacterial infection will be localized. So let's uh, get the person who has given the fastest correct answer. That's great, Dr. Parvati Balkrishna. She took six seconds, I think here, you needed a few seconds to read out the options and decide. Very well done, Dr. Parvati. Congratulations. Let's go to question number three. And question number three is there on the screen right now. Erratic fever pattern is seen in which infections? A, viral fever, B, bacterial infection, C, malaria, or D, scrub typhus. And your time starts now. Time's up. I think, uh, Computer G, can I have the correct answer? And the correct answer is C, malaria. So I think half of the answer I gave it in a previous question. <laughs> with the by. Yeah, malaria was initially thought to be an alternate day fever. Uh, infection which causes a fever on every alternate day. But if there are a group of uh, parasites which are liberated every day, so that can be, a, there will be episode of fever in between also. So erratic fever is very well known with malaria nowadays. Of course, the incidences of malaria are now decreasing, but still we should not forget we are in a still an endemic area of malaria. Correct. So we know that viral fever, there's a typical pattern of fever where initially it will be high, then gradually it will be getting down. Bacterial infections, they will be persisting fever, high grade in between the child is normal and not normal. Scrub typhus, we know that it's an acute febrile illness. It has been caused by uh, the, the bug called Orienta Shushugamashi. And here, the fever, headache, and the rash, this is a triad for trap scrub typhus. And malaria, it is having an erratic fever pattern. And that's the correct answer. Let's see how many of them has picked up this malaria. Computer G. Oh, so majority of them, they thought the erratic patient pattern is because of the scrub typhus. So very few got that correct at 22% to one-fifth of them, they've got the correct answer. Let's see who has given the fastest correct answer. Dr. Sheetal Khade, she took eight seconds. So now gradually we are going from four seconds, six seconds, and eight seconds. Dr. Sheetal, many, many congratulations. I think this good that... We are getting different winners for all the questions. Fantastic. Congratulations, Dr. Sheetal. Well played. Keep it up.
So friends, now let us go to question number four. And the question is there on the screen right now. Since it is impossible to measure the temperature of hypothalamus, the core temperature monitoring sites have been identified and they are esophagus, urinary bladder, and choose one of them, small intestine, aorta, pulmonary artery, or ear canal. And your time starts now. Yeah, time is up. I think this is very, very tricky question. I, I really doubt, uh, I, I rather uh, presume that there will be less correct answer. Let me see the answers, Computer Ji. Computer Ji. Correct answer is C, pulmonary artery. Now here, the catch is because what is core temperature? See, core temperature is the body's temperature from of the organs, right? And we try to reach to hypothalamus because we know that thermoregulatory centers are in the hypothalamus. Now, we cannot test that. So, what we can do is either you have to go to the esophagus, bladder or pulmonary artery. Through the pulmonary artery catheter, if you put, that will give you a correct answer, correct uh, temperature, that is core temperature. People might be thinking ear canal because what we think is because the eardrum has been also, you know, uh, uh, given the blood supply from internal carotid artery. Similar thing is to the hypothalamus. So yes, it is a nearer to that, but it is not the best side to take the core temperature. Yagnes, by your views. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Initially, I also thought it to be a ear canal because it is easier to take a temperature in the ear canal. There are many uh, uh, thermometers are, which are available to take the temperature. Of course, it is difficult to take a pulmonary artery temperature, but it is the best place from where you can decide the core temperature. Because ear canal is usually, you know, it is influenced by even lack of complete isolation from the outside atmosphere. Yes, as compared to skin, it is inside, but still you can have some contamination of auditory canal or even presence of wax can have some uh, temperature uh, differences here and there. there. Yeah. So that's the correct answer. Let's see how many of them have given the correct answer C. Yes, yeah, my guess was good. right. My guess was right. <laughs> and that's why I explained in detail that ear canal, yes, even me and Yagnesh Bhai also were thinking the same thing. But we know that because if you want to go for gold standard, there's nothing like pulmonary artery uh, temperature measurement. Anyways, now let us see who has given the correct answer. Dr. D. Patel, very good, very good. Many, many congratulations. This was really a tough tricky question. You took five seconds. That's again a very good thing. Many congratulations, Dr. Deep. Keep it up. Keep it up. You can definitely win the race. So now let us go to the question number five. Again, see the here questions are not going to be very simple. It will be maybe looking simple, but there are some trick into it. So look, just look at the question carefully. And then you answer. So computer G, can we have the fifth question on the screen? The following is not a red flag sign in a child with fever. A, loss of appetite. B, organomegaly. C, weight gain. And D, rash. Your time starts now. Time's up. So, Computer G, I think here also it is, this is a tricky question. Let us see the answer. Loss of appetite is not a red flag sign. So, here the question is not which is a red flag sign, which is not. So, Yagnesh Bhai, can you just dissect the things or it looks a bit difficult? Uh, in fact, uh, loss of appetite may be considered to be an, a sign of an, uh, uh, not a good sign for the individual with a fever, not only with the child, with the, even with the adults. But <coughs> others, organomegaly, definitely yes. Rash, definitely yes, is a red flag sign. Weight gain may not be there uh, as a red flag sign. 
so here here like what is important is see usually with fever any child will have lot of appetite so if you have organomegaly if you have weight gain if you have rash i think that is definitely not normal thing to happen in patient of fever and that's what we want to highlight that that is not the red flag sign in a child with fever so can i can here yeah, i think i must say there has to be some competition between a and c let us see what are the answers so as i expected that majority they went with c weight gain but the correct answer is a loss of appetite and let us see who has given that correct answer in a short test time again dr parvati palakrishnan she took 7 seconds for the correct answer many many congratulation dr parvati so well done and now i think completely can we have the next question on screen question number 6 look at and read it very carefully friends and then you answer the next is question on the screen computer ji okay the periodic fever associated with mevalonate kinase deficiency associated with cervical lymphadenopathy abdominal pain vomiting diarrhea arthralgia and skin manifestation options are a hyper ig d syndrome hyper ig e syndrome hyper ig g syndrome or hyper ig a syndrome friends please correct it d is hyper ig a syndrome your time starts now times up so here i i clarified the d is ig a syndrome right so friends you have to answer accordingly computer ji can we have the correct answer please hyper ig d syndrome is having this sort of presentation because we know that ig e syndrome again you know that ig e ig g and ig a all three are uh, you know defect of immune system well ige is usually you know high ige level dermatitis and recurrent skin and you know lung infections are there so i we know hyper ige syndrome now igg syndrome we know that there is again autoimmunity malignancy chronic infections these are there of igg and when we talk about iga we should be knowing it is a either chronic rheumatic disease or inflammatory gastrointestinal defect so yagnesh bhai your say on this question Yeah, definitely is not a common disease, but uh, one should definitely, especially all PGs should be well versed with the, such conditions. So uh, I am very hopeful that majority of them will be having a correct answer. Let us see uh, what that is. Also, my gut feeling also the same thing. Computer jury, can we say uh, how many of them they get the correct answer? Oh, again, <laughs> hyper IgE syndrome people have given. but we should be knowing that is more of a dermatitis that was just seen there in the uh, complaints but if you see there was not lung manifestation we know that hyper ig usually lung manifestations are there so here the a is correct answer hyper ig d syndrome 23% they gave the correct answer let us see who has given the correct answer uh, in shortest time Dr Lakshmi another champion we have got oh my goodness this is a record 3 seconds she took to answer fantastic dr lakshmi you will be definitely given benefit because you have given a very correct answer in the shortest time so i think you have a good chance to go ahead many congratulations dr lakshmi computer ji i think six questions are over now let's go to question number 7 and the question is right there on your screen friends look at it in children with jogan syndrome the most common clinical symptoms is symptom is recurrent parotitis recurrent otitis media recurrent tonsillitis or none of the above in your time starts now and 
let us have the correct answer i think my gut feeling is that majority of them will have given the correct answer computer ji correct answer is recurrent parotitis what do you think yagnesh uh, bhai uh, you know that this is a disease of dry eyes and dry mouth because the tears mm -hmm. and saliva they will get dried away and there will be a swollen salivary glands particularly parotid glands and this is particularly you know also there will be some uh, say a stiffness joint stiffness or throat swelling will be there as a part of it then many of times you know you have dry skin and even vaginal dryness is there so uh, your say on this yagnesh bhai yeah definitely uh, jogren syndrome uh, is not a common disease but it, uh, as uh, dr chetan has already said it is a condition which is uh, associated with decreased secretions at different places so uh, one of the uh, main manifestation is recurrent parotitis yeah yeah and see uh, just few days back i had a mother who was to deliver my pregnant lady was to deliver having a jogren syndrome so there the vaginal dryness was really a cause of concern for us so that's important yeah this is uncommon disease but yeah it you can find in your practice also so friends uh, computer ji can we see how many of them gave the correct answer my gut feeling is majority yes and correct because this is i think uh, a common questions which has been asked in all the competitive exams and 54% of the people they said it is a recurrent parotitis and let us see who is that lucky fellow who could make it to the dr radhika kadam again a different winner for us fantastic dr radhika congratulations you took 6 seconds to answer so yes you are in the race now let us go to question number 8 computer ji can we have the next question on screen okay now look at this picture sunburn like rashes they are seen commonly in steven johnson syndrome toxic shock syndrome kawasaki disease or impetigo and your time starts now so time's up and computer ji let's have the correct answer on screen toxic shock shock syndrome now here i think people might get confusion between say even kawasaki sjs and tss because even kawasaki is having that this sort of uh, discrimination sj is also having but i think we should be knowing that tss which has been caused by the toxins exotoxin produced by specific strain of either staphylococci or a streptococci well sjs if you see usually they will be around you know mouth and oral cavity around so mucocutaneous junction eyes and all that so that is about sj syndrome and kawasaki we know that is periangual around the tips of the fingers it will be there and impetigo definitely it is not a there is no question that but typical word sunburn like rashes are very important for the answer let's see uh, yagnesh bhai your thoughts Yeah, yeah, fine. It is same as that. Continue. Okay. So, uh, what's the correct? Uh, how many people have given the correct answer? Thirty-six percent thought it is Kawasaki. Yeah, you are right, friends. That it is a discriminatory disorder, and that has been very well discussed about Kawasaki. There, but as I said, it will be a periangual uh, discrimination, and. Uh, here the correct answer is tss till 30% they have given the correct answer let's see who is the lucky guy who got the correct answer vassal badesia very very congratulations dr vassal you gave it in 3 seconds again somebody has to break this record of 3 seconds two people are there tied at that particular time yeah definitely we are not considering this this but yes 3 seconds are very swift and many congratulations vassal you are one more winner out of this eight so new winner is emerging so all the very best for further your progress so computer ji next let's go to the next question question number 9 friends it's on your screen dye which is used to stain parasitized rbc in qbc taste for malaria what is it toluene in blue crystal violet acrid in orange or right stain and your time starts now
Time's up. Time's up. Computer ji, I think this is also very, very tricky question. Let's see what's the correct answer. Acrid in orange. I think here people must be knowing what is crystal violet. I think that people should have because we know that that is to stay in the gram positive bacteria because first you, uh, you know, give the crystal violet and those bacteria who preserve the, that particular violet color, they'll be, you know, crystal violet colored. So that is gram positive. And those who take a different strain that is pink, that will be gram negative. So that is for, we know that it is for the gram positive uh, bac um, bacteria isolation. Toluene in blue, it's more for, you know, oropharyngeal carcinoma. So it is more for mucosal lesions. Right strain, and this is, you know, we are using for, you know, differentiating the cell types. When particularly, we are using in a peripheral smear or we are using uh, in a bone marrow aspirates or, you know, sometimes we are using in a urine examination. While well, acrid in orange, this is the dye which has been used you know, to see that whether the malleable parasite antigen that attaches to this particular dye and then this gives the correct uh, reading. So that is the correct answer, acrid in orange. So, Yagnesh Bhai, I think this is the explanation what I, I thought of because the this PGs must be knowing that different stains are used for different, different Apart from uh, the tests. Uh, all uh, varieties of the pathological conditions also. Uh, so this is one of the way of pre pathological procedure. Correct. So, Computer G, can we have the number of people? 45.71%. So, majority of them, they have given the correct answer. So, good, good, very good. PGs, you have good knowledge of this particular segment. So, I am very happy for that. Uh, can we have the, who is the lucky guy who got the correct answer fastest? Dr. Parvati again. I think this she is coming for the first, third time. So she is definitely in the lead. I must say she took five seconds to answer. Many congratulations, Dr. Parvati. You're going, going great guns. Congratulations and all the very best for rest 11 question. I think you need to be again doing these things consistently to reach to the your destination. So Computer G, <laughs> can we have the 10th question? And friends, your 10th question is there on the screen. The following is not a manifestation of Mediterranean fever. Recurrent short febrile illness, abdominal pain, erythema nodosum, or arthritis. And your time starts now. Time's up, time's up. And I think uh, here I, 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 I feel that you must be getting the correct answers. And Computer G, can we have the correct answer on screen? Erythema nodosum is not the manifestation of Mediterranean fever. Uh, Yagnesh Bhai. Yeah, here you should definitely concentrate on the word not. Because yes. sometimes it is difficult whether abdominal pain is there, arthritis is there, recurrent short febrile illness is there. You must be wondering which of them is correct. But on the contrary, all of three are correct. And this is not the manifestations of Mediterranean fever. That, yeah. that is a tricky question. So, so we know that this Mediterranean fever, which is a genetic auto-inflammatory disease. Now here typically is, there is a, you know, uh, it occurs in recurrence. So it's a bouts, we care, say bouts called attacks for say, uh, it lasts for one, two, three days. So particularly that bouts can be a fever, it can be abdominal system, it can be chest or it can be joints. So these three, three things are part of Mediterranean fever, not the erythema nodosum, right? So I think you will be must, you must be getting the correct answer. Let us see how many percentage of people have given the correct answer. Computer G. Computer G, can we have... Okay. Yes. So my guess was correct that people, because the erythema nodosum was not fitting into it. And we know that there are typical conditions where the erythema nodosum occurs. So I think it was easy pick. Now it was easy to be correct, but whether it is easy to be the fastest, let's know who is that person who has uh, hit the buzzer fastest. 
Dr. Fenil Thakkar, again, new winner emerging. He took three seconds. Many, many congratulations, Dr. Fenil. Fantastic efforts. I think, yes, you can be there. You must have given a correct answer previously also. Let's see how the total goes. And so keep it up. So we have many, many good people. Like many, many PGs are coming into the race of getting the highest number. And uh, this is, we have reached to the halfway of our quiz. So friends, those who have got the correct answer, but they have not made it in time, don't worry. Because ultimately, your correct answer or your name, if it has been flashed on the screen, is not important. If you have given more correct answers, even if you have taken few seconds here and there, but still you can be in the lead. So be there, keep trying. And now part two, I will be handing over to Dr. Yagnesh Bhai. Please, Yagnesh Bhai. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Chetan, for conducting the first uh, 10 questions of the uh, quiz uh, excellently. Now, Computer G, we start with the 11th question. So, the question is in your screen, D-test in MRSA. Sorry, Computer G. Can we have the question on the screen? Computer G? Okay. So the question is D test in MRSA is used for A inducible clindamycin resistance, B macrolide linsomat streptogramin resistance, or macrolide streptogramin resistance, or all of the above. Your time starts now. Now, these are the three different varieties of resistance which we have uh, said as an option, clindamycin re uh, resistance, macrolide resistance, or macrolide streptogramin resistance. So, Chetan, you want to have a, yeah, your uh, comments? Completely, let's have the correct answer first. Yeah, first let us go. All oh. of above. All so three. three. This is a wonderful test. We should be knowing about it because this is a very important test because it's a simple disk diffusion test. So usually, I think I, my guess is people must have given A as a, a correct answer. This is what I guess because we know that the you know MRSA isolates which are been you know with inducible clindamycin resistance, they will be having you know uh, sensitivity to clindamycin but resistant to erythromycin. So macrolide group is erythromycin, lincosamide we have our lincomycin and clindamycin and streptogramin that is another group. There are two different groups, group A and group B. They are again used in a MRSA. But suppose you have the report showing that there is the erythromycin resistant, but clindamycin sensitive. If D test is positive, that means you should not use clindamycin even if it is showing sensitivity. So what is D test? We use the erythromycin. We use, say, clindamycin. You put it on agar and then inoculate it. Then if you see that erythromycin zone, it is extending and taking the clindamycin zone. So then what will happen? The clindamycin zone will be cut like a D. So that is called D test. It is D test positive. That means erythromycin, if it is resistance and it induces the resistance of clindamycin. So if you use the clindamycin in that condition, it will be not working. So here it is used for all these three, macrolide, say erythromycin, lincosamide and streptogramin. So streptogramin A and B group are there. If you use A group, then it is bacteriostatic. But if you use both group, it is bactericidal. So this is interesting thing about the D-test in MRSA. And this, we must be knowing it. So this is what we can have the good knowledge by this particular quiz. Yeah, definitely an excellent explanation, Chetan. And uh, uh, let us see how many percentage of uh, participants have given a correct answer. Computer G. Oh, 86 percent. Excellent. So, so, excellent. So, so, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. So, our, our participants are much cleverer than what, uh, what absolutely you are absolutely. thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the fastest one is Dr. Lakshmi once again with four seconds. Excellent. Congratulations, Dr. Lakshmi. 
Well done. And now, computer G, we move ahead with the twelfth question. Fever for more than five days with thrombocytosis, and your diagnosis is SLE, Kawasaki disease, early chiosis, or malaria. Your time starts now. And the correct answer is Kawasaki disease. The Kawasaki disease is the disease where initially you will not have a, all have a clinical clues only. You will not have a diagnostic clue, but thrombocytosis may give you a clue after five days of fever. Chetan, your comments. Yeah, Yagnesh Bhai, here I think nowadays the Kawasaki disease awareness has been so much then the I think I'm sure the practicing pediatrician looking at the question only will give the correct answer Kawasaki. Because first and foremost thing is fever which is going to be there, high grade fever more than five days, that is only Kawasaki. The first requirement is fulfilled. Yes, then other, other things we know that the Kawasaki features are maybe you have a conjectival, bilateral conjectival injection. So it is only redness, not a con purulent conjectivitis is not a part of Kawasaki disease. Second thing, you can have changes in lips and uh, tongue. There may be a strawberry tongue or cracked lips. Second thing. Third thing, you have a lymphadenopathy. That is unilateral lymph node. That will be there. Then you can have the extremity changes, maybe edema over the hands. And last thing is a polymorphic rash. So this is typical of Kawasaki. You should be knowing about it. Now, you may get confused because thrombocytosis is usually in rheumatological condition. But SLE is a condition where you get a thrombocytopenia. Ahalichosis is, I think, is a recursive disease which is caused by ticks and it is a zoonotic disease. And we know that malaria, even SLE, so these all are causing thrombocytopenia rather than thrombocytosis. So thrombocytosis uh, with fever more than five days, fever, the best answer, rather correct answer is Kawasaki disease. Yeah. Uh, and Computer Ji, uh, let us have a look at the percentage of uh, correct answer. 59%. Excellent. Excellent. And who is the fastest one? Computer G. There must be a tie between the fastest finger. <laughs> Dr. Sheetal once again is here with the four seconds. Excellent, Dr. Sheetal. Well done. You had once again and uh, proved your caliber. So, Computer G, now we go ahead with the 13th question. A Pontiac fever is caused by Legionella, Sigella, Influenza, or S. pneumonia. Your time starts now. And the correct answer is Legionella. Yeah, here it is reasonably easier question with uh, trial and error, If even if you do not know it. it because is, Shigella yeah. will cause Shigella dysentery, pneumonia, S. pneumonia, because pneumonia, influenza again will a respiratory disease. So one which is left is Legionella. So, so diagnosis by exclusion, we can say. Yeah, diagnosis of exclusion. <laughs> so, but that interesting fact about Pontiac fever is, you know, it's a legionella which is causing it. So, people must be aware about legionnaire diseases. But this particular Pontiac fever is a milder form of legionnaire disease, where we have influenza-like things, fever, headache, muscle aches. And most importantly, in Pontiac fever, you will not have the pneumonia. And the history behind this Pontiac fever is that it, it is a place near Michigan, in the Michigan, where long back, maybe 1960 or 70, there were so many workers, they fall fell sick. And then they, they found that this is a legionnaire which is causing this particular fever. And that's why the, they, that name Pontiac fever came. 
So this is an interesting history behind it. But legionella is the organism which are causing it. I think it should be easy pick as Dr. Ignatius I said it is by diagnosis by exclusion. Uh, let's see. So the percentage of as correct answer is computer G. Yes, ninety five one percent did it correctly. And the fastest finger is. Rakesh Verma, two seconds only. Yes, Fantastic. fastest, really fastest finger, two seconds only. Well Great. done, Dr. Rakesh. He, he broke all the records. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is the way we should play. When you know the answer, we are confident, go for fastest finger because you will be getting an edge over others. Very good, Dr. Rakesh. Yeah, next question, 14th question of the today's quiz. Computer G. Double quadian co fever is seen in inflammatory arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or all of the above. Your time starts now. And the correct answer is inflammatory arthritis. Any explanation to this, Chetan? This is interesting. You know, I have heard quotidian, tertian, uh, quartan fever. This is double quotidian. So here, double quotidian means there is a two fever spikes a day. That's double quotidian. We know that malaria, we have different uh, patterns, you know, quotidian, uh, tertian, quartan. So every second day, third day, fourth day, like that. And here, this double quotidian fever is also seen in maybe infective endocarditis or, you know, vascular lysmaniasis and inflammatory arthritis. I think this is a tricky question. I'm not sure how many of those um, PGs have picked up, right? Let's see. It will be interesting to know how many percentage uh, A, we have got a correct answer. If they get by majority, I think I must go for to PG to do it again. So the computer G, what is the percentage of uh, correct answer? Aha, I'm correct. <laughs> I'm correct. Because it is it is very tricky because everybody knows that it is arthritis, right? So, but it is specifically inflammatory arthritis. So that's the catch. So it was a difficult question. Yes. And the fastest one is... Rushi Barod, five, five seconds. Excellent, Dr. Rushi. Well done. Congratulations. New hero em emerging. New hero emerging. Yeah. Karamsad, uh, the team from Karamsad. Good, Rushi. Well done. Go ahead with it. Now the 15th question. Gloves and socks syndrome is caused by which infectious agent? Parvovirus B19, measles, HHV6 or S pyrogenes. Your time starts now. And the correct answer is parvovirus. I think this should be easy pick, I, I must say. Because we know that measles, uh, of course, we have not heard it because it's a glow and socks. Here, typically, it is on a glow and socks region, you get uh, this particular it rashes. Is, yeah. yeah, and parvo, we know that it's a fifth disease. It is also called slap cheek appearance, it is there. Usually, this uh, parvovirus, you know, it is known for hemolytic anemias. So, aplastic crisis. And usually, it is found in between 3 to 12 years. But this particular glow and stock syndrome, usually, we get in a young adults. So, measles cannot be there. HHV6, again, it is a rosula infantum. All it is called sixth disease. Exanthem subitum. So, here, usually, we get younger children. And we have, must have seen that HHV6 causing rosula infantum, causing a fever which is a surprise rash. 
you know fever comes fever goes and then next day there will be a surprise rash so patient will present with high grade fever with con convulsion only so that is typical of hhv6 and streptococcus pyogenes we can know that it is the bugs which are causing particularly a, a streptococcus sore throat and a scarlet so here parvo b myantin it is the, uh, the correct answer and we must be aware of this particular infection in our practice because you can be in a very difficult situation if the patient gets an infection and uh, he is getting the like, plastic crisis yeah the uh, uh, computer ji the percentage of correct yes 49% excellent well done and the uh, fastest finger is Rushi Barot again, three seconds. Excellent, Rushi. Well so done. I, I think he has just come and joined the quiz or what? <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Congratulations. Fifth and sixth disease is confusing. So people have been, you know, more or less uh, good numbers getting both the answers. Good, Rushi. Yeah, computer ji. Solva question. Aapke samne pesh kiya jai. Treatment of choice for empyema thoracis, IV antibiotics, VETS, thoracotomy, or ICD insertion, insertion and fibrinolysis. Your time starts now. Correct answer is VETS. In fact, Jaitan, these are the four options which saw four eras of treatment. Initially, we only had an IV antibiotic, was the treatment of ICD insertion and fibrinolysis and now finally we are going ahead with the VETS. So VETS is the correct answer and treatment of choice. So, uh, let us see I, how many percent. I am yeah, sure sorry. the people must have guessed it correctly because now... So it in should be era 100 percent this time. Yes. So, video assisted thoracoscopy is the treatment of choice because you have the pus and there may be many septies. So, it is very difficult to get away with ICD insertion. You might be opening up one particular uh, area and there may be uh, other which has been left. Yes, it was the, as Dr. Ignatius very nicely said, yeah, ICD insertion fibrinolysis was just before the VATS regularly like, came into existence. And now everybody's going for VATS only. It's a wonderful technology. You can see it. You can cut the uh, this particular things and you can clean it. So uh, let's so see how many of them they have given. What is the percentage of correct answer? 40%. Still. <laughs> There is a divided uh, uh, divided audience. Yes. So still people are thinking ICD and fibrinolysis is a yeah. uh, treatment of choice. But now we are sh shifting. Oh, Rushi. Master's finger again, <laughs> Rushi Barot. Congratulations, Rushi, for consecutive third win. Fastest finger. Great. Congratulations. So, Agla, Satrava question, computer ji, up screen pe pesh kiya jai. LPA for TB recognizes resistance to which ATT? Your options are rifampicin, INH, both A and B, that is rifampicin and INH, both or D, none of the above. Your time starts now. Time up. And the correct answer is both. Yes, sir. You can continue. So, at least 
someone keep the video on so i can know that it's yagnesh bhai's signal is going down or mine is going down yes yeah we are here sir watching okay yes. fine yagnesh bhai's uh, connection is a bit unstable anyway so this is a uh, question was very interesting line probe essa essa what yagnesh bhai okay so let me go ahead with the discussion that lime probe essay is a multiplex uh, nat you know nucleic acid amplification test and yagnesh uh, bhai your connection is not stable okay he left i think yeah anyways yeah fine so a line probe yeah. essay is uh, to recognize the resistance to which att and we should be knowing that this is there are two types of assays available lpa1 and 2 so one will differentiate like decide that, that whether it is a drug sensitivity testing or resistant to inh and rifampicin in both and if you go for second line lpa then it is uh, for other drug like fluoroquinolones and here important thing is line probe essay is to be done only on only in smear positive cases so if you have isolated the organism or isolates are positive then only you have to go for lpa otherwise you cannot go for randomly and this is having a turnaround time of around say 48 hours or so so this is a very good uh, essay now it has been done under government uh, machineries so we have to use it very you know sensibly when we get a correct answer or correct uh, isolates or smear positive then only you have to go for lpa let's see how many of them given the correct answer very good very good very good 62% majority of them they given the correct answer and let's see who is the lucky guy not rushi again vatsal bade sir well done vatsal you 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 did wonderful job 3 seconds yeah fantastic so now i think gradually we are shifting towards the end of our uh, competition three questions left friends be attentive try your best don't be panic don't uh, rush to give the answer but yes you give the correct answer that will help you to reach to the top so computer ji can we have the next question question number 18 on your screen mefenamic acid is not used an antipyretic because it causes a frank colitis in asymptomatic women overdose causes generalized tonic clonic seizure a mucosal damage due to impaired local prostaglandin synthesis and imbalance in equilibrium between the cyclo and lipooxygenase pathways of arachidonic acid metabolism or all of five though and your time starts now Times up, times up, and this is very, very interesting question, Yagnes Bhai, because yeah, yeah. mefenamic use is now by nowadays, you know, been in rise. People are using left and right mefenamic acid, so this is very important. Let us get the answer first. All of above. That means mefenamic is is not to be used because there are so many complications associated with it, and usually. the dose of mefenamic acid is a problem for pediatric population what we have seen is because it's a dose it is inflammatory if at all you want to use it it is 2.5 mg per kg but people are using half teaspoon one spoonful that's the reason there is a more complication so uh, i think this is a good question to make the people aware that mefenamic acid is not to be used is not the choice of antipyretic right yagnesh bhai Paracetamol is the drug of choice for uh, uh, whenever we are using it as an antipyretic, and we should avoid. There are plenty of complications, including the three mentioned here. So we should avoid using phenamic acid, especially for the years. So, so, so the thing is, yeah, paracetamol is the safest option. and people are using other uh, antipyretics because there is a you know constant complaint by the parents that child is not getting a febrile so we should be knowing what is our target we want to make the child comfortable by reducing the temperature a bit not to make the temperature 98.4 
So if you want a temperature, because we know that we learnt in this whole session that thermoregulatory set point is set. Body has decided to take the body's temperature to 103. So if you give the antipyretic that will decrease that threshold, it will bring it to 101. Suppose, then the body temperature will be 101, not 98. So if the child becomes comfortable, that's our end point. And that's the way we have to use it. So paracetamol is a safe drug, which can be given frequently also. Only thing is you have to see for the upper highest dose. And that's the only thing. Otherwise, the safest drug, uh, paracetamol. So let's see how many of them, they got the correct answer. Okay, so... 44%, good. 33%, 53% they found that there is some specific thing. But mind well, friends, uh, all of above are the side effects of methanamic acid. Let's see who is the having a fastest buzzer. Deep Kumar again, again, come bounce back after gap of many questions. Many congratulations, Dr. Deep. Fantastic. And now I think we'll go for question number question. 18, nine, 19. 19. Sorry. Yes, Yagnesh Bhai. Yeah, then uh, next question, 19th question. Computer ji, pesh kiya jai. Fever, gingival swelling, blisters on the lip and gingiva, drooling, looks dehydrated. And the diagnosis is hypangenia, measles, herpes, gingivostomatitis, or HFMD, hand, foot, mouth disease. Your time starts now. And the correct answer is herpes gingivostomatitis. Definitely, yes. Fever, gingival swelling, and blisters. This will be this blisters will be on the lips as well as in the gingiva. This will lead to a drooling of uh, saliva from the mouth. And because of excessive loss of saliva uh, water through the salivation, the child may look dehydrated and sick. So the diagnosis is herpes gingival. So, Jagnesh by here, that is. see, so see here, your comment. Yeah, here I think all four conditions can have something in the mouth. Correct. So herpangina, you will have on something on the throat. Measles, we know that will be a complex sports, right? Near the first molar. Hand, foot, mouth disease. This is again, there will be lesions in the uh, soft or pellet uh, or in the posterior part of the tongue. But here, clearly, it has been seen that it is gingivostomatitis. It is on our lips as well as on the tongue. It will be there. So this is all four are a viral infections. So mind well, even if you see ulcerative lesions in the throat, in the mouth, please don't think it is a bacterial infection and start antibiotics. Think about all these things. HFMD, you know, that is all. so many cases nowadays. So we have plen in plenty. We will get the... Uh, other things like other uh, the, the papular lesions over the hands, foot, and even the buttocks. And typically, the hand foot mouth disease patient also will be having first day only irritable child, younger child with the drooling only. Next day, there will be uh, some lesions will be found and then you can diagnose it. So this, all four conditions are viral. Don't prescribe antibiotics. That's the bottom line. Yes, let us see how many of them have given the correct answer. <laughs> 48 percent good so one thing is sure that people they know it, it is one not of measles. those considered measles yeah yes that is great <laughs> and hfmd and the also fastest... they know very well yeah yeah so there was confusion just between this herpangina and the stomatitis uh fastest finger is rakesh verma once again with four seconds excellent so we have a good race going on amongst the few of the contestants, at least visibly, uh, what we can see. We do not know the answers, uh, other answers of the second and third number, but at least the first fastest, there is a definitely a race. So, Computer Ji, now we go ahead with the last question of today's quiz. May I have that question on the screen? Salt and pepper retinopathy is caused by 
रोबेरा साइटोमेगालोवायरस टोक्सोप्लास्मोसिस और कोविड नाइन्टीन योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ And the correct answer is rubella. Yeah, comments. Yeah. So this salt and paper retinopathy is, uh, I think, there is two condition. One more is, uh, if I'm, I, I think syphilis. Syphilis also having the same salt and paper retinopathy. And rubella. This out of these options, rubella should be the first thing. We know that the different virus is causing different effect on the. the retina and here why it is we are giving importance to rubella because congenital rubella syndrome is very important complication in the pediatric population and the newly born babies so if the mother is having rubella then the child will have congenital rubella syndrome and that's why we are now increasing we had the campaign of mr vaccine measles and rubella campaign as well as the rubella vaccines in a uh, young girls because when they become pregnant and they should not have the congenital rubella syndrome and that's why this important disease to understand and salt and paper retinopathy is caused by the rubella out of these four options and let's see uh, how many of them they got it correct fifty-five percent plus very good excellent none of them said covid <laughs> so they are all <laughs> master of covid <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the fastest one is Abhishek Singh Rajput. Again, a new winner. Three seconds. Excellent, Abhishek. So we are now through with the all twenty questions of the today's quiz. Our computer ji is busy finalizing the summing up the various results. Fastest one, the total corrected one. and taking into the consideration of both not only the fastest and not only the uh, maximum number of answers but considering the both the computer ji will prepare the uh, final result very shortly but reassure uh, friends the person who gets the num first number or second number but i uh, i always believe the rest are all also a winner because they participated in the event participation is must to enjoy the quiz is must and uh chetan your comments yeah see uh, i i just now my you know mind is thinking that who will be the winner uh, if i get a winner whose name is not been uh, flashed any time in the uh, answers then it is interesting possible. to see the who is a slow and that steady is, wins the race yeah that is also possible definitely it is very much possible so if the person has given all correct answer taking his own time i think he can get the the, the good number like the first number uh, yes dr uh, chinappa sir i think um, i was really happy with the way both of you all conducted the quiz it was really entertaining so very nice of both of you uh, now i want to ask both of you uh, how many yeah. do you think there is going to be a tie breaker or no tie breaker <laughs> it can be because see there were so many uh, Contenders for the race, so, so there might be a chance of tie breaker. Ah, there is, there is. There is. There is. I want you. I want you to place a bet. <laughs> <laughs> My gut feeling is there will be tie, but uh, actually it it will not be. That's what my answer. Okay, fine. So this is this is like sitting on the fence, Chetan. Why? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Acha. Dusra one small request to Mr. Jairaj and Manjula and Computer Ji. From tomorrow onwards, we'll reduce the time to five seconds, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Average. People At least are, we can do it ten seconds. Sir, we should sure. congratulate the teachers in the Western Zone, and people are answering in two three seconds. Wonderful teachers they have, like Dr. Chetan Trivedi sir and Agnesh Papat and uh, many teachers. So they have trained them so well that they are answering it so fast. Hope teachers are not sitting with them. <laughs> <laughs> No, they must be sitting together. Software. I think it is. It is fun enjoying that. Uh, all good to the young generation, ma'am. This generation is really, really uh, smart. Yes, yes. And, And most importantly, 
the good questions the other the scientific questions answers they were knowing so that is a fantastic thing that's what see our aim is not to make somebody make, win or lose ultimately yeah, yeah. is a dissemination of knowledge and that there we are uh, most successful i must say yes sir with the permission of you all uh, can we just uh, make one announcement uh, before Please. the yeah Yep, Abhina, can you share Sorry. the poster? Uh, yes, uh, yes, ma'am. I'm sharing. Dear doctors, yes, uh, I would like to say, Piva Foundation will be conducting case presentation competition like how we did last year, and we are opening uh, it for you to upload your cases. It can be case based or research based, which you want to share. The only thing is that it has to be on. fever related only so it has to be can you make it full yeah so the poster the rules of the posters are your poster or because it is showing unstable here your poster should be uh, e poster only we are only accepting e poster we are not accepting uh, anything even if it is a hard copy and you have to take a picture and submit no it has has to be uh, submitted on the ppt one single slide uh, the link which you will get it uh, will have the template so use the same template in uh, of one single slide ppt for uh, submit the posters and uh, the poster should be uh, having a simple picture which is shown here and it should be simple but the guideline of this ppt uh, can you just go to the next ones yeah just two minutes i'll just finish can you go to the next slide abira the other guidelines quickly yes ma'am it's open yeah see the guideline for your virtual poster presentation topic should be related to fever only it can be research based or it can be case based and category of participation case study or original paper you can pick from the uh, options which you will get in the uh, abir is gone now yeah right it's come and poster uh, template to be used and uh, Word should be limited for the title. For the title of your poster should be the word should be less than fifteen, and along with the one single slide PPT, you need to attach an article in the word format. It is something like a synopsis of your work, and then maximum number of words is five hundred, and the format which you need to submit it will be as per in the Indian Pediatric, which is the official journal of IAP. so i our we have a scientific committee who will be going through all your posters and they will be actually screening all the posters and the top 10 people will be called to make the presentation uh, the first author will be asked to make the presentation and then in that the first two winners will be announced and all participant will be getting the participant certificate so Uh, please uh, upload your posters we will be sending you your registered email id we have we'll be sending the link to you for uploading the posters okay so over to our quiz master and the judges for announcing the uh, winners please let us keep fingers crossed <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> at least there should not be tie <laughs> As I see the result, there will be, sir. We have seen because everyone answering was so should be there. Oh the my way, goodness! You know? Because two two people, I thought so. Let us see. <laughs> okay. Uh, computer G, can we have the results? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Three persons. <laughs> Three people. So, uh, Dr. Manjula, we have to pick up two. No, sir. We have to play another round of three questions now. Tiebreaker. That's what we had announced. So let's see whoever uh, fastest in that will get. Let us see whether we'll get first and two winners. So we'll be Then, playing among these three only, or yeah, these three only. First yeah. and second will be chosen from these three only. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So can yeah. we please, yes, yeah, sir? Can we only these three people? Uh, um, can you put the name again? Uh, we will just repeat the name. Uh, can you put that? So please? if the somebody else is pressing, then it will not be seen. No, correct? Okay, yeah, fine. Not so so I presume, I presume, Doctor Manjula, that all three have scored equally. Yes, sir. <laughs> all three have scored equally. All okay. three have scored okay. equally. Fine. fine. So can we get that? Uh, how many seconds it took that way? No, sir. The what we have, we can do it in the next if the tiebreaker round. First tiebreaker round, we will run the three questions, and then if continuously, then you will ask them one question. 
who have once uh, like that single question then the timing so these are the three options kept it okay. as we have so advanced. so okay. i think we have three people friends yeah, can, and you have to can, pick up one from them yeah right? can you show that slide again uh, name yeah 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 names You have to pick two out of three, Chetan Bhai. Yes. Acha two, two out of three. That's what yes, I was asking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we need so, to have two winners. Yeah. Fine. Doctor yeah. Parvati Balakrishnan, Doctor Rushi Varut, and Doctor Deep Kumar Patel. Only three of them will be playing. Others, please watch. Don't press any button. Only three of you will be playing this uh, three question round. And whoever answers, uh, who let us uh, get first and two from this. Uh, this. Right. Achha, can can we get something like this? Which are uh, they are from which institute? Just to make it uh, known to everyone, do like, we have that? I, we have that. I think usually they are giving at the end. Uh, is it possible to give uh, now itself? Who they are from? Which which institution? Or if you can put it, we can tell so, orally. Yeah, Doctor Parvati is from which institute? If backend team can tell, tell us. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the place and institute should also come on the screen. Okay, so fine, yeah. no problem. They said uh, they will have they will get uh, need some time. Let us yeah. start that uh, tiebreaker. Yeah, tiebreaker finals way they are yeah. going to put it. Yeah. So Dr. Parvati, Rushi, and Deep, three That's are right. contesting, right? Rather fighting yeah. for the top two uh, slots. Yes. Okay. So computer ji, are you ready to take the tiebreaker round? <laughs> yeah. So the first question for tiebreaker. The question is: Eleventh old male child presented with fevers for seven days. Swelling of knee joint, red lips, peeling of skin, cervical node enlargement. Investigation showed elevated ESR and thrombocytosis. What is your diagnosis? Your time starts now. Times up. I purposefully didn't give the time for options. Reading the options because <laughs> if I read the options by that time, because this case has already been discussed in previous case or question, <laughs> so they know the answer. So that's why I didn't uh, give the options. Uh, let's see what's the correct answer. Yes, this is what I described rather. What is Kawasaki disease? I was not aware that this particular thing is going to go for tiebreaker and this question will be there in the tiebreaker round. So anyways, I think uh, Dr. Manjula will be having uh, the uh, number here. Yes, sir. We will be okay. again uh, showing same bar. So let us same. see how many of these three gave the correct answer. Okay. Yes. Correct. I hope all of three of them must have given A. <laughs> So then your work will be even more difficult. I know, I know. But see, that is what they have reached to that this thing. So they will be taking the correct answer. Please, computer G, let's know. Yeah. It's very exciting, sir. So people really yes, yes. that two, two, three seconds, all are taking it, three, four, it, less it, than it, five. It, yeah. Eight was the longest. Longest is eight. Not uh, something very uh, uh right. Oh even still, we are excited. Still, they have come <laughs> all well prepared. So can yes. we have the? So computer is taking computer is taking more time than the uh, participants. <laughs> <laughs> computer D is the old version, I think. <laughs> so the new generation is faster than computer. Yeah, yeah. Computer, you want to take a help of our participants? <laughs> Computer is our generation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about our generation. I know. Our marketing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're getting the... Achha. So, Dr. Deep Kumar got the uh, correct answer, right? 
Yeah, in four so seconds. For the fastest. Four seconds. So, Yagnesh, bhai, your connection is not uh, stable. Yagnesh, bhai. Sir, should I ahead, take? Sir. Yeah, yeah, should I ahead. take all three, Yagnesh, bhai? Because your your uh, connection is not stable. Kethan, bhai, go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. Okay. Okay. Fine. So. Now, uh, Doctor Deep no got the. If, I, if I'm answer. missing something, you can continue. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Second so, question I will take. Yeah. Right now. Okay, I'm taking it. So, question number two: Newborn baby presented with diffuse erythroderma, tachycardia, convulsion, and encephalitis, maculobubular rash, and bullous rashes are common in. Options are in front of you, and your time starts now. Time's up. I think uh, for this question, I would invite Dr. Chinappa to discuss. <laughs> because this is what he taught us how to diagnose this condition. I think the important thing here is that um, the... Uh, 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 just a minute, sir. Can we have the correct, uh, correct answer? Yeah, sure. Computer ji? There is, no, there, is no, there is no differential here at all. Because if you have a small baby who comes to you with... Uh, multi-system involvement, especially involving the skin and subsequently lands up with hyperpigmentation in the around the nasal passages, etc. The diagnosis is almost certain. Steven Johnson syndrome doesn't affect the brain. It doesn't cause any brain issue. Toxic shock will not produce erythroderma. It produces more of a peeling kind of a rash all over. And hemorrhagic chickenpox will be very characteristic with the lesions. The lesions will be vesicobullous and in newborn babies, it's it, it's basically a very serious disease and will have a fatal outcome. So if you have a child with multiple uh, involvement, then with uh, with uh, bullous lesions and maculopapular lesions, the, most likely the diagnosis is chicken. So if I think Dr. Chinapasa shows his patient photograph once, you will never forget in your lifetime to miss the diagnosis. It's fantastic photograph, what he has a collection of it. Bullous lesion, bullous rashes, you know, typical in young newborn, the newborn. If you see it, I think it's chikungunya, we can, it's a spot diagnosis. Thank you, sir, for the enlightening about this particular condition. Uh, Computer G, uh, are you ready with who has got the correct answer mm -hmm. fastest? So here, house is divided amongst three. 57% got toxic shock <coughs> syndrome. Nobody has given the correct answer. Yeah. Is it that? <laughs> it appears like that. <laughs> yeah, because nobody is given C. So I think next question should not be asked to Computer G that who has given the correct answer. Yeah, yeah. So let's move ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, only yes. only one minute. How did this percentages come? Uh, yes. That's because what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah. Only three of them should be there. So it can't no, be this, this kind of percentages. Can we see who is amongst the three answered the question correctly or wrongly? Looking at no, this, none of the answers, no one has, yeah. answered it. but why then it should be there are the percentage. The percentage. No, other, others are also answering. I mean, we are no, just we not not this three. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, 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 fine, fine. So you are just uh, okay, cutting, uh, discounting them, fine. So still, out of those answered, nobody got the correct answer. <laughs> Very interesting, okay. I think next question, Yagnesh, your connection is stable. You can go ahead. Yeah, the next question is name of dengue vaccine, which is in phase three clinical trial. Options are TDV, CYD, TDV, that is tetravalent dengue vaccine, then ATE, or all Your time starts now. The all your time starts now. A 
and the correct answer is tetravalent dengue vaccine. So these are the three different vaccines which are in different phases of trial, out of which the tetravalent dengue vaccine is the phase is in the phase three clinical trial. So any other comments from the yeah, I think yeah. Chinepa sir, I think this is the vaccine which failed miserably uh, because we needed, you know, to have at least uh, positive dengue titer to be, you know, qualifying for this vaccine. If you give it in the uh, children who have not rather naive of dengue, then it will be causing a complication. Am I right? Absolutely. I think this vaccine was introduced in the Philippines and withdrawn subsequently because of the uh, increased mortality seen in those who have been vaccinated. So, you know that we have the four types of dengue virus, type 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, that's why it is very tricky to make the vaccine because all four to be in one vaccine. So, even if this has been tried in certain African countries, in patients or who have already got dengue once and it is having a good result. So, now it has been approved for, say, uh, for clinical trials also and for a certain population where the, uh, the area epidemiologically where the dengue is very high there it is being uh, successfully uh, been given so now let us see who has given the correct answer or how many persons computer ji rushi barot uh, uh, 10 uh, seconds uh, 10 seconds 10 seconds uh, I think we have winner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But 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 we have to take two of them, right? Yeah, we have to take two first now as uh, winners because uh, both of them will be a team anyway. They'll be team now, so both will go into the finals. Uh, uh, Doctor Jagdish Chanapa can take the final call, sir. Sir, there are two people who have answered correctly out of three questions one nobody answered it right so you have two people who have answered it correctly so we can take as a joint winner sir. correct absolutely yeah. absolutely so who were these, those two rushi barot and uh deep deep, deep. wow mm. great so can we have along with their institution the final slide uh, so yes uh, they will be uh, please i will tell you doctor uh, mr uh, dr rishi and then dr deep uh, you will be work, uh, playing as a team now that you are playing as an individual, but for finals, you will be playing as a team. You will be representing Western Zone and uh, you will be competing in the national event as a Western Zone competition. We will be sharing each other your contact details. Our team will send so that you can get in touch with them, prepare well and then win the final. Okay. So, so, so now I think yeah. uh, Anand then Surya Nagar, both from Gujarat. <laughs> so, so it's a team Gujarat who is uh, now. Now I think me and Yagnesh Bhai will be part of them. Yeah, we please are, train we them. Be yes, <laughs> train them well. <laughs> so we are from West Zone. So as a team, Doctor Deep, Rushi, me and Yagnesh Bhai. <laughs> so we are winners. Anyways, uh, uh, people, the narrow margin. I think uh, Doctor Lakshmi, who missed out? Third Dr. one. Parvati. Parvati. Uh, she is from which institute? Can we have that? Because she just uh, narrowly lost. So she is equally winner, I must say. Mm. Uh, she is from backend team. Can we get the institute name? Yeah, one second. So there is one more announcement from the backend team here. Dr. Rishi Banot and Dr. Parvati answered the answers right. But Dr. Rishi answered it in less than 10 seconds. Parvati took 16 seconds to answer. Oh. That's really narrow that's miss, more, narrow miss. Yeah, Dr. Parvati, yes. like my heart goes for Dr. Parvati. I am telling you. So, Dr. Parvati is from uh, Karad, Maharashtra. Ah, Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences. Medical Dr. Medical. Parvati, you played fantastic and uh, very. We feel very sorry, but don't you don't feel sorry because you are winner because we are taking your name three times more than others. <laughs> <laughs> So many congratulations, both the winners. And uh, back to Dr. Manjula or Dr. Chinnapasar. And uh, Dr. Jagdish Chinnapasar. So I think it was a very, very fabulous uh, conduct of the West Zone quiz. And uh, I think all of you will agree that uh, the margins were very narrow. 
and uh, we had a very good uh, session so i think we have two wonderful winners from gujarat and i think they are going to represent the west zone uh, with their uh, respective teachers giving them all the important tips but i'm sure that the final will be tough and uh, uh, well let them train as difficult as much as possible but i'm sure that we will give them a good challenging uh, quiz for the um, finals so i think it was exciting and we are looking forward to the other two days now where we still have the the um, uh, east zone sorry the uh, south zone south zone and north zone still uh, awaited and so we will see how it progresses and uh, how our contestants uh, take part so it, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful show dr chetan and dr agnish and i hand it back to dr manjula i uh, thank you very much sir it was wonderful i thank uh, quiz master and the judge uh, for having uh, beautifully conducted the event and thanks and all the participants uh, wonderfully playing and then uh, everyone had come so well prepared and then it was a tough competition i guess so i think with the permission of the panel uh, judges and the quiz master uh, can we uh, close the yeah. uh, quiz sir yeah Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank all. you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations Thank once you. again. Thank you. Thank you.